Hi fellow key shooter, Espinox Helm here. The tutorial that you are about to see is part of two exciting things. A. The Render Weekly Season 4 Week 8 challenge where the topic is the real cloth shader and the new fuss note coming with Keyshot 9. And B. Which I'm even more excited about, a course called Keyshot 9 New Feature Scenes that I'm currently wrapping up together with my good friend and awesome CGI artist Magnus Skogsfjord. In the course, we will cover the features in Keyshot 9 that we find the most exciting, and we will teach you how to use these features through a bunch of practical hands-on video tutorials with the scene files included. If you want to get access to an early bird discount and learn more about the course once it is launched, make sure to send us your email through the Google form in the description below. Also, take a look at Magnus' YouTube channel right now, because there's a couple of free chapters on cat preparation, Marvelous Designer, and The Real Clutch Shader. If you don't know Magnus already, make sure to put your eyeballs on his Instagram account for some of the best keyshot work that I have ever seen. Enough talking, let's start learning. In this video I'm going to show how to create an animated flag or simulated flag inside Houdini. And you can follow along using the free apprentice version of Houdini, but to be able to actually output the final animated geometry as a limbic format that we can import into keyshot, you need to have at least the indie limited commercial version. If you're new to Houdini, there's a lot of stuff here in the UI, but we only have to worry about three main windows for now, and that's the view we have here. It's our node network or our object network. And this window up here where we are going to edit the different nodes. To create our flag, the first thing we need is a piece of geometry that act as the flag. So to add that in, I hit tap or right click here in the uh, object network and I type in grid. I'm going to use a grid as the base for this flag. So I hit enter and left click to place it here and you see we get our grid. So I hold down alt and right click and drag to zoom out and hold down alt and left click to move around the view here and uh, the middle mouse button to pan. To edit this grid, I have to dive into this node. So to do that, I double click it like so. And you see now we are inside it. Uh, we have the object network and we have the grid that we are inside now. Here we have our grid and up here you can see some basic parameters that we can adjust for this grid. The default settings are good enough for what we are going to do to begin with. But one thing I want to do is to adjust the size to be a bit more flag like. So maybe take the uh, width to 20. That looks good. And then I'm going to adjust the uh, rows here so we have more uh, square polygons, like so. With this grid, uh, I can try and hit play here in the uh, animation timeline and see that nothing happens. And one thing you might notice is that the uh, playhead is just moving really fast across this timeline and that's due to Houdini by default is just playing as fast as it can. If you want to see it in real time, make sure to hit this uh, small clock icon down here and you'll see that it looks a bit more reasonable. What we need to do first after creating the grid is to convert it into a vellum cloth, which is a new cloth type in Houdini 17. I left click and drag a connection here and hit tap and type in vellum cloth. That's exactly what we're going for. Um, so we have a lot of options in this note that we can use to adjust things like density, stretch and bend and stuff like that. If I go ahead and activate the note, we see that the mesh is being divided into rectangles because that's going to give us a more nice animation. So if I hit play, still nothing happens. And that's because we need a vellum solver to uh, figure out what is going on with this piece of cloth. So I'm going to type in vellum uh, solver. You can see it's a brain with a drape. And we have these three output from the vellum cloth node. And we also have three inputs for the vellum solver, but they are uh, connected automatically. So we don't have to worry about that. So if I go ahead and activate this newly created vellum solver node, and hit play, you'll see that our flag starts to fall nice and slow to the uh, abyss. Not looking too cool. 
one thing I want to do for this flag is to pin at least some of the corners here so uh, it won't fall into infinity. So to do that, I select my Willem cloth node, go up and find this uh, box called pin to animation where I can select some points to pin. And to select the point, I hit the arrow at the far right side. And when I do that, you get uh, you can see that we get to select some of these points here. So by holding down shift, left click and drag, I can take this corner here, this corner here, and maybe a bit in the center here. And once I'm happy about the selection, I hit enter. You can always see um, what Houdini wants from you here at the bottom in the uh, in the view. So press enter when done, and I'll do that. So if I again hit play, you'll see that the flag is now falling slowly, but it's uh, sticking here uh, at the uh, vertices that I selected. Let me just hide my grid, and this is how it looks. A bit more cool, but still a bit boring, right? So let's try and go into the Vellum Solver, because in that one we have a tab called Forces, where it can add gravity that is on by default, and then we can also add some wind. And uh, the three values here are always X, Y, and C. So maybe we want some wind blowing in the uh, C direction. So let's try and type in perhaps 10, hit enter, and play the animation. Yeah, so we have some wind, but it's uh, in the opposite direction uh, from what I want. So I type in negative 10 to kind of make it move the other way around. All right, so now that I have this in place, it's still not looking too good. And the reason why is that we have a pretty rough mesh. Um, to have it looking more realistic, we need to create it way more dense. So I go back up to the grid and for my rows and columns, I might use 64 for each. Um, make sure to go to the start of the uh, play bar to see the change, something like this and maybe adjust the uh, columns here to make them a bit more rectangular. To do this um, adjustment, I hold down the middle mouse button, left click and drag, like so. If I play again, you'll see that we lost some of our pin connection, or it looks at least a bit weird. And that's due to our pin to animation points. When I add more points, uh, the numbers are shifted around. So. We have to go back to the vellum cloth node, select the pin to animation selector here and select a couple of new nodes uh, over here. So again, holding down shift and left click and drag to add those and hit enter when I'm done. So if I hit play now, whoops, seems like I forgot to delete these here. Yeah, so hold down control, whoops, undo that. Hold down control and drag to uh, delete the points and hit enter. So now it starts to uh, look like something useful, right? Okay, so to make this a bit more interesting looking, what I want to do is actually rotate this flag 90 degrees. So just after the grid and before the cloth, uh, the cloth constraint or the cloth node, I'll add in a transform node. So I select this line here, hit tab and type in transform and hit enter. And with this one selected, I go ahead and rotate it. Let me see, that would be 90 degrees in the C axis, negative 90 to have our normals facing uh, our front here. So let's just click through, looks good and looks good. So if we hit play again, we get something far more interesting with these wrinkles and waves in the flag and we can see how the gravity and the wind is creating this nice movement in the flag. So now we have calculated this blue area so now it plays back in the real time. If you want it to move faster or slower the easiest thing to do is to go into Vellum Solver node, go to the Solver tab and adjust the time scale. If you move it up to 2 the movements will be twice as fast and if you want it to be more slow, like a slow motion type of animation, you can go and put it down to maybe 0.5, go back to the start and hit play. 
and just let it calculate for a bit and see that it's moving way slower. I think for this one, that one is pretty nifty. All right, so we are kind of getting there. Uh, the last thing I want to show you before we wrap this up is that inside this vellum cloth, there are a couple of parameters you can adjust to adjust the look of this flag. So maybe if I just go to the vellum solver node first and to the forces tab and make the wind more strong, negative 20, and then go to the stretch here. You can see the stiffness is at one and then it's multiplied by a one with 10 zeros. So that's a, a huge number. If I take it down to, for example, 10 and play back uh, the simulation, you can see how it stretches like a lot, like a lot. So it's a pretty stretchy piece of fabric we have now. Looking pretty fun, but it uh, might be too much. Uh, so you can take this up and down and play with the values to get uh, a nice type of stretch that you're looking for. I think this is looking pretty nice. Yeah. The bend, you can see it's a pretty low value. Um, so what happens if we take that up to maybe a factor of 1 million? You see that we get a pretty stiff piece of fabric, almost paper-like or something like that. So there's a lot of fun to have playing with the bend and stretch uh, parameters to get uh, all, all kinds of different looks um, just by adjusting these two settings. But let me take this back down to, I think it was around this, and I'm pretty happy about this stiffness there. So. Let's just simulate the full timeline, so we have that baked. Alright, pretty nice. So you might notice that when we have some tight waves or, or curves in this fabric, the uh, we could use a finer mesh. But we also have a post-process node for this vellum setup. So if I drag a connection from this output by left-clicking and drag, and hit tab and type willum post process and hit enter. We get this node here that I activate by hitting this uh, far right icon. And inside this node, we have a couple of different things we can do. First of all, we have some smoothing. We can add some spatial blur to kind of relax the mesh a bit and we get rid of the, the worst of these points, but it's still looking a bit pointy here, as you see. And to get rid of those, what we can do is to add a bit of subdivision. So I hit this subdivision drop down and select the Catmull Clark option and maybe take the subdivision depth up to two, like so. And you see that it looks pretty nice. The playback might be slower now, so it's not real time anymore, but you, we kind of get an idea of how this is going to look. If you want to preview the animation without the post process, you can always go ahead and activate the node above it to see uh, the real time playback. In the post process node, we also have a collision correction. Um, I have never had to use that, but I guess that if you have some areas where the mesh is um, kind of self intersecting, this detangle and self collision will help to avoid that. But it's not something that I have experienced ever, so I usually don't uh, check it. I just have a quick look if anything is intersecting in the animation, and if not, I don't use it. At last, we have the uh, Thicken, where we can add some thickness to this mesh. So if I enable it, you'll see that we get some actual thickness to this piece of fabric. One thing to be aware of here is that it doubles the amount of polygons. If I go to the Vellum Post Process node and hit the middle mouse button, you'll see that we have around 66,000 polygons at the moment with the thickness. And if I take that or disable that and check again, we only have around 32. So if you need the thickness, it will approximately double your file size. And with these Alembics with a lot of polygon, the file size can be quite big. A couple of gigabytes is not unusual for this type of animation. For what I'm going to do, I'm not going to see the backside of the flag, so I'm just disabling this, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this setup. 
I need to do one last thing before I can output this, and that is to UV unwrap this. If I go to the bottom post process node here and add in a quick UV shade and enable that and bypass my Vellum post process node for now to have things calculate faster, we can see that the UV map is not looking very nice. Looking funky, but it's not going to work. Uh, for what we are going to do. Fortunately, this is easy to fix by going to just below the grid node in the top of your node tree here. Select the uh, connection, hit tab and type UV project. So I add that in and left click to put it. And once we go back to the beginning of the timeline, you see that everything looks nicer now. And once we play through, the UV coordinates stays in place. Perhaps if we want to, we can go in and adjust the scale here a bit. Let me just go to the start of the timeline to make these more square. So I'm holding down the middle mouse button and dragging left to do this. All right, pretty happy about this. And we can also see that when I enable the post process node again, it's still looking nice. There are more than one way to output this as an Alembic file in Houdini, but when we just have this single mesh, the easiest way, at least I think, is to add in a Alembic ROP output node. So I select that, add that to the list, and all I have to do here is to select where I want to save it. So I can put it on my desktop for now, call this one flag.abc. And if you don't type in ABC, it will be outputted as another big file, but um, Keyshot is not going to understand the file because you have to type in this file name yourself. So make sure to type in .abc and hit accept. Then I have to set the frame range. It's currently just the, uh, the current frame but I want to render the frame range. And it goes from frame one to frame 240. And if you want to adjust it, you can go down here to your timeline and take this to maybe 120 if you only want half of the animation and it adjusts here accordingly. But for this setup, I want the full timeline or at least the 240 frames. So I type that in and go ahead and hit save to disk. Now we just have to wait for Houdini to calculate all the frames into one animated Alembic file that we can import into Keyshot. So now the file is outputted and we can see that it's around half a gigabyte in size. And again, as already said, it's not unusual for animated Alembic files to be this big. Just something to be aware of when you start working with them yourself. 